Can you believe that I am doing this in a Raspberry Pi? Impressive, isn't it? This is the new Lineage OS 17.1 Android 10 from Consta Kang installed on a Raspberry Pi 4. This will turn your Raspberry Pi into a fully functional tablet-ish. This is by far one of the most stable and fastest systems I run on a Raspberry Pi so far. So after installing Lineage OS, I will install some very common apps to kinda stress test the system and make sure it can handle the workload. If you start watching this video and feel like it is too much or you are new to the Raspberry Pi world, just hang in there, I promise it is extremely easy. I would like to apologize in advance to my advanced viewers as I am going to cover some basics before we start. So the items that we are going to need are a Raspberry Pi 4 Model B. This will run you anywhere between 35 to 75 US dollars depending on the size of the RAM. Second most important item is an SD card. You will need a minimum of 16 GB Class 10 SD card. Of course you will need a keyboard, a mouse and a monitor or a TV with HDMI port and a separate PC or Mac to download Android 10 to write it to the SD card. Don't forget to like and subscribe for a chance to win one of these four Raspberry Pis. Details of the giveaway in the description at the bottom. Now let's get to work. <laughs> Okay, first thing first, you need to grab that SD card and insert it in your Windows, PC or Mac and go to constakang.com. Click Devices, Raspberry Pi 4, Lineage OS 17.1 and click on this link to download Android 10 Lineage OS. This is the system that you will be installing on your Raspberry Pi. Next, go to this link to download the Balena Etcher. This is if you don't have it already. This is the software that you are going to use to write Lineage OS image to the SD card. Now that all your downloads are completed, go ahead and install Balena Etcher and start it. Click here to locate your downloaded Android 10. Select your SD card and make sure you have the right SD card. This is very important. If you have any other SD cards or USB devices connected, I highly recommend removing them to avoid any accidents. Now that you have the right destination, go ahead and write to it. This process will take a few minutes. You will get this message at the end. It may say complete but failed in some cases. It is fine as long as it says completed. Go ahead and remove the SD card from your PC or Mac and insert it in your Raspberry Pi. Wait for it to load and follow these steps as I'm showing you here. You can use Ethernet or Wi-Fi. It is up to you. You can choose to set up a pin number or a password, I'm skipping this step. Now let's get to the fun stuff. As you can see, there's no Google Play installed, so we're going to need to download it and install it. To do that, we will need to go back to kongsekang.com, click Devices, Raspberry Pi 4, Lineage OS 17.1, and click on this link to download Flash Recovery to Boot Zip. A 
and make sure it is downloaded. Now we need Google Play, so we're going to download it using this link. This is all you're going to need to move on to the next step. Don't quit on me yet, we're almost there. What we're going to need to do next is go to the files folder, copy these two files and paste them or move them to the Raspberry Pi folder. Alright, go ahead and close out of that and go to settings. Scroll to the bottom, you should see about tablet. If you don't see it, go ahead and enter about tablet, click on it. Go all the way to the bottom where it says build number. Click on it until it says you have established development settings. Go ahead and get out of that. Go back to system, advanced, developer options, and look for root access. Go ahead and enable that. Click OK. Now we need to find local terminal enable it now just open terminal allow type in su r p i 4 dash recovery dot sh and reboot this is what you should see if everything goes well go ahead and swipe to allow modifications install click open gaps Swipe the confirm flash. This will not take too long. Wipe Dolvik. Swipe to wipe. Go back. Go back one more time. And back again. Wipe. Swipe the factory reset. Go back. Go back. Go to mount. Check boot and system. Go back, now go to install, we need to reinstall the recovery boot, check reboot after installation is complete and swipe to confirm flash. This is it ladies and gentlemen. Now the easy part, simply answer these questions however you like and you should be up and running in no time. Now I'm simply going to install a bunch of apps as you normally would do in a tablet or a phone and we'll see how Raspberry Pi handles these apps. Let's take a look at WhatsApp. Let me make a call here and see how that works. Looks pretty good. I mean the video quality is not at the best but I mean I'm happy with what I got. All right, Zoom, let's see. I'm going to join a meeting and I'm going to call my phone. Looks good. The controversial TikTok is working. Now, here's an important piece. You need to use an app such as this one that I'm using to control the screen rotation. You will need this one for WhatsApp, for example. This is not a recommendation. This is simply the first app that I was able to find. I honestly didn't expect Microsoft Office to work this good. It is, it is impressive. Look how fast everything is moving. I'm really, really, really happy with the performance. Now I'm going to try to make a call with Google Voice. 
it does work however you do need a USB mic in order for you to use this option on your Raspberry Pi This is basically a look on my home camera. I'm going to check on my dog. Looks like she's taking care of herself. All right, this brings us to the end of this video. Please like and subscribe. Thank you. See you in the next video.